Hello friends, today we will discuss about the feed treatment process. So every heat treatment process consists of three steps. First is the uh, heating. Second is the holding. And third is the uh, cooling. So heating process involves small grains will combine and forms a large grains. Then heating medias are air that is a non-uniform and slow. Oil, uniform, uniform and rapid heating used up to 200 degrees Celsius temperature. Then uh, salt bath, uniform and rapid heating that is used about 200 degrees Celsius to avoid oxidation and decarburization. So this is the heating process where the metal is heated with the heating media into the furnace by using the cupola furnace or in a muffle furnace or in electric furnace. The next uh, process of heat treatment is the holding. So in holding means uh, keeping that uh, metal at that temperature for a particular period of the time so that all grains will turn into uniform shape and size. All carbides dissolve to form austenite. Then time of soaking depends upon the size of the component, type of the steel, initial microstructure, etc. So this is the holding process where the metal is keep stable at that particular temperature for a particular period of time so that it will forms the grains for the uniform shape and size. All carbides get dissolved to, to, to the form the austenite. Then last process of the heat treatment is a cooling process, which is based on the cooling or rate of the cooling. Final grain size of the component properties will be decided. So this is the third step of the cooling. So cooling will be the converting the liquid metal into the semi-solid or solid state metal with the desired properties. Next cooling is also called as a quenching or quenching media or cooling media that is the uh, media used for the cooling process. So the quenching medium should be in such a way that it should extract heat rapidly at high temperatures and slowly at lower temperatures. So cooling media is in decreasing order of cooling rates. So first is the brine solution that is cold water plus 5 to 10 percent of salt. So it will reduce the distortions and eliminate weak spots. Then cost rate than the water corrosive service life is reduced. Commonly used salts are NaCl that is sodium chloride, uh, then CaCl that is calcium chloride, CaCl2, then NaOH that is sodium hydroxide, etc. Then second cooling media is a cold water. It has a low cost, abundantly available and easy handling. Uh, generally it is used for the uh, cooling of the carbon steel, alloy steel and non-ferrous alloys. Then bubbles can be formed, which leads into soft or weak spots. So th that is the cold water as a coolant media. Then third is a water plus soluble oil, which is a non-uniform hardness and distortion and cracks. Next coolant is a, or cooling media is oil. So mineral oils are used, reduces the risk of distortion, more suitable for alloy steels than plain carbon steels. 
So this is the oil as a coolant media. Next is a fused salt. That is a salt containing the large number of ions. So used for high speed steel. So the advantages over brine solution, it is a uniformly in temperature, uniform heat transfer, and no danger in the oxidation and decarburization. The next quenching media is the air. So it should be a dry air. So the lowest cooling rate, there will be no cracking in air as a quenching media. The next point is the objectives of heat treatment. So by using the heat treatment, it increases the hardness of the metal, wear and abrasion resistance and cutting ability of the steel. So it will increase the hardness, wear and abrasion resistance and cutting ability of the steel. That is the main objective of heat treatment of the steel. Then second one, it uh, re softening the hardened, hardened steel. Third is to adjust mechanical, physical, uh, or chemical properties like hardness, tensile strength, ductility, electrical and magnetic properties, microstructure or corrosion resistance. Then it eliminates internal residual stress. It induces controlled residual stresses. Uh, heat treatment stabilizes the steel. Then heat treatment refines the grain size. Then heat treatment increases machinability. Then it eliminates gases like hydrogen, which embrittles the steel. Then heat treatment changes the composition of a surface by diffusion of carbon, nitrogen, silicon, etc., so as to increase the wear resistance, fatigue life, or corrosion resistance. So these all are the objective of heat treatment process for the steel. The next one is the first heat treatment is a conventional annealing. So annealing, it is the heat treatment process where the steel is heated the above the recrystallization temperature in the furnace and cooling is carried out by switch up in the furnace itself. So that process is called as an annealing heat treatment process. So there are two types of annealing. One is a conventional annealing and second one is isothermal that is a constant temperature annealing. So here the transformation of the austenite into coarse perlite is formed by a conventional annealing. So the applicable conventional annealing is applicable for steel with uh, 0 to 2 percent carbon. The objective of conventional annealing is to reduce or relieve the residual stresses induced during the cold working, to soften the hardened steel, to refine the grain size, to increase the ductility, to make steel suitable for subsequent heat treatments. So these are the objectives of conventional annealing. Then process of conventional annealing, first is the heating. So hypoeutectoid steel, that is A3 temperature plus 50 degree Celsius temperature and hyperutectoid steel, that is A1 temperature plus 50 degree Celsius temperature. So A3 will be 910 degree Celsius and A1 will be 727 degree Celsius. So additional 50 degree Celsius temperature will be there and the heating of the steel occurs at that temperature. For hypoeutectoid, it will be the A3 plus 50 degree Celsius and for hyperutectoid steel, it will be the A1 plus 50 degree Celsius. So hypoeutectoid steel, it contains the carbon percentage less than 0.18% and for hyperutectoid, it will be between 0.18 and 2%. Then second step in the process of conventional annealing is holding. So holding at this temperature for a definite period for equalization of temperature and complete austenization. After that, third process of conventional annealing is cooling. So the furnace cooling to room temperature is the cooling for the conventional annealing. So in conventional annealing, hypoeutectoid steels are always annealed from above A1 temperature and never annealed from the above ACM temperature. 
So the dislocation gets blocked, which induces the brittleness in the steel. Then oxidation and decarburization occurs. Then grain coarsening is also occurs. So here in this diagram, you can clearly see in the it is the schematic representation of blocking of dislocation by cementite region. So this is the region of cementite. Then this is a perlite and this is a dislocation. So the blocking of dislocation by cementite region occurs that will represent the conventional annealing. Next is isothermal annealing. So here you can see the temperature remains constant for a particular period of time. So here it is A1 temperature and here A3 temperature. Then time on X axis and temperature on Y axis. So isothermal annealing, it is applicable for medium carbon that is a 0 0.3 to 0.6 percent carbon and high carbon that is a 0 0.6 to 2 percent carbon steel and some of the alloy steels. Objectives of isothermal annealing to obtain improved machinability. Then the isothermal annealing process include heating that is a hypo eutectoid steel A3 temperature plus 50 degrees Celsius and hyper eutectoid steel a1 temperature plus 50 degrees Celsius temperature. Then next process is a holding that is holding at that temperature for a definite period of time. Then cooling, slightly fast cooling than the, the conventional annealing to a constant temperature just below A1 line, holding at that temperature for a completion of transformation and then cooling to the room temperature in air. Then advantages of isothermal annealing, it reduces reduce annealing time than the conventional annealing, especially for the alloy steels. Then it will provide the homogeneity in structure. Then improved machinability because of spheroids of cementite, surface finish and less wrapping during the subsequent heat treatment. Then the disadvantage of the isothermal annealing is large size components cannot subjected to the this treatment. Next one is a diffusion annealing. So here high carbon steel, casted components with non-uniform distribution of carbon for diffusion annealing. So here rich in carbon and poor in carbon region. So whenever it will be uh, heated between the 1000 to 1200 degrees Celsius temperature, the carbon gets dissolved or diffused and uniformly distributed carbon is occurred by slow cooling process. So here rich in carbon and poor in carbon region, so here rich in carbon region and here poor in carbon region, because of diffusion annealing, this rich region carbon gets uniformly distributed in poor carbon region by heating and slow cooling process. So such type of annealing is called as a diffusion annealing. Thank you for watching the heat treatment process, which includes the conventional annealing, then isothermal annealing and diffusion annealing.